Hello everyone, and welcome to The Model, the home of the Nylon Collection. We're delighted to present our latest exhibition, A Thought of Sligo, a collection of works by Jack Butler Yates from the Nylon Collection. The exhibition will highlight a diverse range of paintings from the artist, which include early illustrative works, watercolours, and a selection of Yeats' late period oil paintings. A Thought of Sligo will focus on the impact that Sligo and the West of Ireland have had on Yeats' works throughout his life and career. We have 29 pieces on show, which span over 50 years, from 1890 to the 1940s. So, as part of our little preview tour, I'm going to go through a few of the works that we have on show, starting with An Island Man. So this painting was completed in 1905 using watercolours. The illustration was actually the front cover for John Milligan Singe's The Iron Islands, which was first published in 1907. Jack contributed 12 pen and ink illustrations to the book, which were later hand-coloured in watercolours when Yeats exhibited them. Yeats met Singe in 1905, when the two men were commissioned to produce a series of articles for the Manchester Guardian, now known as The Guardian. They travelled through the west of Ireland, from Donegal to Galway. While Singe gathered information for his articles, Yeats sketched people and their way of life. While most of Yeats' illustrations show the islanders at work, the front cover shows an island man standing on the coastline looking out to sea. He can be seen wearing traditional Aran Island clothing, which include his hat, his waistcoat, his flannel trousers and his cowskin pambooties. The man's confident pose lends him an air of dignity. This is said to be indicative of Yeats' romantic view of the West. This next painting is called A Political Meeting, County Sligo. It was completed in 1905 using watercolours. So the original painting was purchased by an American lawyer when it was first exhibited in Dublin in 1905. The painting eventually found its way back to Ireland via the efforts of the Nylon Collection's founder, Nora Nylon. This large watercolour depicts the annual reunion in Sligo of the Irish National Foresters. On February 11, 1905, the crowds have gathered outside of Sligo Town Hall to welcome the General Secretary of the Association, the Lord Mayor of Dublin. As Jack was living in Devon at the time of this meeting, it is likely that he sketched the image from a photograph, or perhaps from a description by a family member, or from the articles that appeared in the Sligo Champion at the time. The whole scene, which is principally drawn in pencil, has a detached perspective, as if Jack is viewing the meeting from the outskirts of the jeering crowd. The Lord Mayor of Dublin can be seen in the top floor window, leaning out as he addresses the crowd of what is now City Hall. So, the last painting we're going to talk about today is the Graveyard Wall. It was completed in 1945 and is an oil on canvas painting. Jack didn't actually embrace oil painting until much later in his career. The hesitation potentially arose due to the fact that his father was a master in oil portraiture. However, the eventual change did give rise to some of Jack's most expressionist works. The scene depicted is a country road beneath a windy sky. A man can be seen in the middle of the painting advancing along the road, his hands thrust out as if describing something with passion and conviction. A second man can be seen just behind as he leans down for shelter in the graveyard wall as he attempts to light his smoking pipe. The painting is likely inspired by a book in which Yeats illustrated, The Weaver's Grave, which tells the wishy story of two senile conic men who attempt to find the family plot for a weaver who has recently died. The greys in the sky greatly contrast the artist's use of colour in the foliage that border the country road. The dominant blue tone is also typical of Yeats's more expressionist period, which became much more prevalent in his later works. The exhibition has been put together with physical distancing in mind, and so it is safe to see in person during our opening hours. Visit our website at www.themodel.ie for a full breakdown of our new guidelines and our up-to-date opening times. We will have staff on site to help assist you with your visit, and we ask for your understanding as we do our best to ensure the safest possible environment for all visitors and staff. For those of you that wish to cocoon during this time, Selected works from Athoda Sligo will be explored through our concurrent virtual exhibition on Instagram. Connect with us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, or sign up to our mailing list to get the latest updates over the months ahead. Until then, from everyone at The Model, thanks for watching, take care and stay safe.